So we're in, in Plymouth Bay, and this is the spot where the Mayflower ended up. I guess the first place it landed was in uh, Cape Cod, which is uh, this direction right here. And there was no suitable place for them to stop, I guess, so they came to Plymouth Bay, which is right here. And supposedly landed at Plymouth Rock, which Plymouth Rock is really just a symbol, I think. It's not actually the rock they walked out on. It's, it's right here next to us. And, um, but it's not exactly in the same spot that it was originally because they wanted to build in that spot. So they moved it a couple of times. It was what I've heard. And um, the um, rock has actually been broken a couple times and glued back together. And anyway, we're gonna go take a look at that rock right now. So they have this monument built over the rock. It's a little cage down there. It's inside there. You can't actually physically touch it, but we can go look at it. And right now there's actually a guy in there cleaning it, cleaning up the area. Apparently people toss coins in there and he's cleaning all those out of there. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you can see the crack right there. And then it has 1620 on it, which symbolizes the date of the Pilgrim's Landing here, which I think it was in December of 1620. Mm. Right here behind you. That's the Mayflower 2. So this is a replica of the Mayflower. This is what, exactly what the boat that brought all the pilgrims over from England to America. It's actually uh, a lot smaller than I thought. We're gonna do a tour of the boat, self-guided. And uh, this is what happens when you walk in. So typical stuff they would have brought with them, wood plates and bowls. the size of the bed. I know. So they were just saying this back part over here would have been where like the captain slept and maybe some of his officers. And then probably uh, that electrical box right there. That's how they put all the lights on when they were sailing the Mayflower here. <laughs> see, see the lights. It looks like there's down. There's more down there probably where the most of the people stayed. Let's go towards the front here. So this is where the passengers would have been, 102 of them, sitting down, laying down for a very long time with these windows being closed because water would be shooting into them. So unless they stopped for some reason, they'd have to have these closed. So man, I can imagine everybody throwing up when the seas were rough, it must've been hard. So here's the anchor system. And this is where they would have kept the animals up here. They said that they knew they had at least one dog or two hunting dogs, I think he said, two hunting dogs, some possibly chickens and pigs, goats. This was a pilgrim fan. This is the best one. This is uh, what kept them nice and cool the whole time. All right, so that was an interesting tour of the Mayflower replica, mm -hmm. the Mayflower 2. Yeah. That was a really cool ship. Uh, and interesting to see how they traveled for that 66 days and it would have been hard and then uh, yeah like you said it would have been amazing to pull into this bay and see land yeah and knowing their new lives are gonna start You touch the Atlantic with the tip of your pinky finger? I touched it before you got on film. So we headed across the street from Plymouth Rock and up the stairs. So this monument is for all the people that died within the first year 
out of the 104 passengers, there's a list of all the people that died. There's quite a few. It talks about uh, the bones of all the people that died were in the canopy over the rock and now they are in this monument. So in this monument, this is basically a grave site for all of those people that they could find. William Bradford was um, one of the passengers on the Mayflower and was also, I guess, elected um, governor of Plymouth. So for 30 years, he was the governor of this town, this colony. All right, we're gonna take a little walk right here to uh, Burial Hill, yeah. where, the, where the pilgrims were, were buried. Now here's an old street. All these houses built in the early to mid 1700s. This would be downtown Plymouth. There's Domino's where the pilgrims would get their pizza. <laughs> They had a lot of interesting artifacts inside. Uh, some of the some old books from England with laws in them and uh, things like that. They had um, just different artifacts from the area. Uh, the first fire pump in the in this town, anyway, it said it was built in 1828, I believe, from Boston, and then brought over here and used for like 50 years here in this town. Right up this way is Burial Hill, and this is the first church in Plymouth. One interesting thing, just after the Declaration of Independence was written, it was read right outside the steps there to the people that were here. So that's pretty awesome. The Declaration of Independence was right there. John Adams uh, often defended people in this building. He lived 30 miles north and would come down here on his horse to uh, work in the court here. That's pretty neat. And they call it Burial Hill. It is really on a hill. Okay, so right now I'm looking at Mr. Thomas Clark. He was a mate on the ship, on the Mayflower. Died at 98 years old in 1697. It's crazy, right? So one thing I've learned is all these uh, markers and stuff, a lot of the original pilgrims did not, um, their, their stones did not make it and they were recreated later. They're still old, but they were not the original, you know, stones. So some of these, Guys, like this one here is probably a monument to him and it's not the original um, stone. Some of these aren't even concrete, they're just slabs of stone. Yeah. That's so cool. 1766. Yeah, a lot of them just chunks of stone. But it's still pretty interesting and uh, we're gonna walk around here for just a moment. Mm -hmm. And then we'll uh, start heading back towards the beach. Yeah. So this is the site of the first fort built in 1621 and it says the lower part was used for the church it was also part of the fort down there so right where it says the first church that was part of the fort so this whole hillside probably those trees were gone and they can see the ocean was their first fort you know so they can protect themselves from strangers and mostly mostly native americans i imagine so this would have been the lower part of the fort and down here as well. All right, so that was our little tour of Burial Hill and Plymouth Rock and the Mayflower. 
that was pretty cool and interesting learned a lot and all the artifacts they have in there was very neat and just thinking that you're standing on the same spot that the declaration of independence was read out to the public when it was first made and brought here to this town and where john adams used to come through the door it's cool pretty neat and um but we're going to take off um there's a lot more to see but we don't have time so we are going to leave here and go to boston and get in the air conditioning since it's the hottest day of the summer yeah it's just about 100 degrees and humid and we are gonna go get in the air conditioning take a ride to boston get out of here and we're gonna come back at another time to do some more